Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and welcome to Ape's Video Notes for Topic 7.8, which will cover noise pollution. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe the sources and the environmental effects of noise pollution, and the skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video will involve looking at a passage and trying to describe the author's reasoning for the claim that they make. So we'll start out today by talking about sources of urban noise pollution. And so noise pollution, it just refers to any sound that's going to be loud enough to cause some of these effects, such as hearing loss or communication issues or headaches. And so this is going to have problems for humans, just as it's going to have problems for wildlife. So in the city, these could be things like construction, you know, things that involve jackhammers or trucks or concrete, very loud noises that can damage your hearing. We also have transportation, cars, buses, and trains. And one thing I'll say is I've started riding my bike to school more often. I noticed just how loud cars are. When we're in cars, we don't really think of them as being very loud because we're listening to the radio and they're you know pretty well sealed. But try biking on a fairly busy road. Well, be careful because that's kind of dangerous. But man, traffic is loud. I will tell you that as a cyclist. Uh, industrial activity is also a source of noise pollution. This could be things like manufacturing plants, especially metal factories, things where they're producing heavy objects that are going to create a lot of noise as the different machines are going. Um, and then domestic activity as well. So just things like loud neighbors who play a lot of noise or mow their lawn or do, you know, home repair projects. So here we have a couple of pictures just to serve as visuals to kind of help us think about everyday things that are going on in the city that we wouldn't think of as being an issue or having any consequences. Um, but they do, they have consequences for both people and for wildlife. So now we'll take a look at some of the effects of noise pollution on wildlife. So just like with humans, animals can suffer hearing loss or confusion or headaches, disorientation from noise pollution. And this is gonna be especially problematic because many animals, um, birds in particular, are gonna rely on vocalizations or calls to each other. And so activities like migration or like mating can be really disrupted when animals aren't able to hear each other. Here's a really specific example of an organism that suffers physiological stress due to noise pollution. So this study was done at the University of Georgia and the researchers subjected caterpillars to simulated highway noise. Um, this is pretty realistic because a lot of caterpillars live in ecosystems that border highways. And so when they subjected these caterpillars to highway noise, we can see here in the blue that before they were subjected to the noise, they had a far, far lower heart rate than after they were subjected to the noise. So there's a pretty um, substantial increase here in caterpillar heart rate when they're subjected to highway noise. And so this demonstrates stress. It demonstrates that the caterpillars may not grow and reproduce properly. And that's a problem if we think about ecosystem services because the butterflies that they will become eventually may decline as a result. So we may lose some important pollinator species. We also wanna think about predator prey dynamics. So predators oftentimes will lie in wait using their hearing to try to discover prey to eat. So that's really important for their survival. And likewise, the prey have to have great hearing as well to try to avoid the predator. So noise pollution can disrupt the predator's ability to find food and the prey's ability to not become that food. And so noise pollution can really have a dramatic effect on survival. So we'll wrap up today by talking about the effects of noise pollution on aquatic organisms. So the first thing to point out here is that our so sources or our causes of noise pollution in aquatic ecosystems are a little bit different than in urban ecosystems or in terrestrial ecosystems. So in aquatic ecosystems, some of the largest sources of noise pollution are going to be tanker ships. So these are really large ships carrying oil or natural gas or just products that have to be shipped across the ocean. So those engines create a lot of noise that travels through the ocean. We also have military grade sonar. So this is going to send sound through really, really long distances across the ocean for different militaries of different nations to communicate with each other. That's gonna be a big source of noise pollution. And then finally, we have seismic air blasts from surveying ships. These are gonna be ships out looking for oil and natural gas deposits on the ocean floor. And we'll talk a little bit here um, in a minute about specifically how that works and why it's so detrimental to marine organisms. Here's a diagram that just helps us kind of visualize that. So we have some organisms here in the water and then we have tankers and these surveying ships and we have you know military grade sonar. All of these waves travel through the ocean. So sound travels very well through water and it can travel really long distances. And so it can have some consequences on these organisms. One is physiological stress, of course. And so the organism could have a faster heart rate just as we saw with the caterpillar 
We could have hearing loss, you know, confusion, disturbed communication. And so this is going to be especially problematic for whales. Whales are a large, you know, group of mammals in the ocean that really rely on sound based vocalizations to communicate with each other. So they're going to have a problem communicating and sending signals to let other whales know about either danger or about how to continue their migratory paths. Whales have even been documented trying to hide beneath rocks or hide beneath or around other barriers to just put something in between the noise pollution from ship engines or other things and themselves. So it's clearly something that stresses them and changes their behavior and can really alter their communication. Then just like on land, we do have disrupted predator prey dynamics as well. So predators may have a harder time locating their prey and getting the food they need to survive. And the prey may have a hard time hearing that predator and escaping and preserving their life. So really problematic for any sort of predator prey dynamics. And then finally, we have this seismic surveying that I mentioned earlier. So seismic surveying involves these ships that will send really, really huge air blasts down through the water. So we can see a picture of that here. We have basically what they call an air gun, which just shoots a huge blast of water down or a huge blast of air down through the water. And that's going to hit the ocean floor and bounce back up and be received by these underwater microphones. Now, based on how that sound echoes back from the ocean floor, it can be used to determine where there might be oil or natural gas deposits. And so this is something that's done increasingly as oil and natural gas deposits on land are running out and we need to expand our exploration for them. The problem here is that these blasts can be up to seven times as loud as the basic noise pollution produced by ship engines. And so it can be really damaging to the hearing, really disruptive to the communication of marine species, especially whales. One thing that I found interesting is a researcher who studies noise pollution in the ocean documented that he was able to record the seismic blasts from surveying ships off the coast of Brazil all the way off the coast of Virginia where he lives. And so really, really long distances that these air blasts and these sounds can travel. So just very disruptive to all sorts of marine organisms. So for practice FRQ 7.8 today, the skill that we're practicing is text analysis. So I couldn't fit the text on this screen. So you actually have to go down. There's a link in the description below and you can read this passage from the North American Marine Environmental Protection Association. It's going to reference some of the things I've already talked about with noise pollution and the impacts that it has on whales. But what I want you to do is read it and then try to describe the reasoning behind the author's claim, which at the end of the passage states that whales may be able to adapt to the increased levels of aquatic noise pollution.